Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so um, today, tonight starts another holiday, a second part of Passover, of Pesach. Um, so let me, we wanted to share a little bit about this uh, second uh, part of the holiday because I think that a lot of people are not so familiar and it's super interesting. Um, so we had the intermediate days, right, between the first days where we had the Seder, right? So and then we had um, days Chal HaMod, which uh, Rabbi Chaim explained. And tonight and tomorrow begins the second half. And what happened then? So the Jewish people um, left Egypt, right? And they come to the, to, the, to the Red Sea. I think it was the Red Sea. The Yam Suf. And, um, and the Egyptians start chasing after them. The Egyptians realize like this is not sustainable. We're used to having slaves. It's been 200 years and they start chasing the Jewish people. The Jewish people look behind them. They see the Egyptians coming after them. They're terrified. On the one hand, on one side, they've got mountains that they have children, they have cattle. It's not gonna work. On the other um, side, they have enemies that will just destroy them. And in back of them are the Egyptians. In front of them is the sea. They're stuck. Um, but they decide, Nachshan ben Aminata, he was just a random Jew who decided to take charge. There were different opinions, as Jews always are. We have different opinions. And he said, you know what? God told us he's taking us out of Egypt. He didn't take us out of Egypt for us to die. I'm going to forge forward. And that's what he does. He actually walks into the sea. The water is rising, rising, rising until it's literally, um, I think it was by his nostrils. He kept on going. He said, if God took us out of Egypt, he will take, he's going to make something happen. And he said, I'm forging forward. And he did that. Um, and God made a miracle right then, the sea split and the Jewish people went through and that was an incredible miracle. And as they're walking through, the Jewish people are singing and dancing. I mean, this was not even normal, right? We, we always compare like the splitting of the Red Sea, right? Cause it's, it's an insane miracle. Um, and the Jewish people crossed and, um, and then the Egyptians tried to come through. But when the, once the last Jew had passed and the Egyptians came through the, the river, it just it just went back to its original state, and the Egyptians were killed. Those who came to chase after the Jewish people, so Egypt so the Jewish people had an incredible miracle, and that's what we're celebrating tonight and tomorrow. And it's called Shvi Shal Pesach, the seventh day of Pesach. Um, and what's interesting is that the woman had their leader uh, leading them, and that was Miriam. Miriam was Moses and Aaron's sister. Our daughter Mimi, her name is Miriam. Um, and she led the Jewish women in tambourines. And then um, after tomorrow, that means um, tomorrow night is gonna begin another part of the holiday called um, the, the days, like the last days, which we call like Mashiach days, right? What's the Hebrew of that? Achron Shal Pesach. It's the Mashiach days where we kind of like, um, we celebrate like, like, the redemption right like hopefully our redemption um and we some people have the tradition to drink four cups of wine on tomorrow uh i don't even know what today's day is because like quarantine mm -hmm. but like tomorrow night no, and then the day after the day after yeah. the day after i don't even know what day of the week that is thursday thursday um thursday we basically drink four cups on that day some people have this tradition and we talk about the final exodus hopefully our exodus um, and just like the Jewish people, right? They left through the Red Sea and they had their final exodus. So, um, super powerful days, days to tap in, days to try to connect, um, and pray for, for our ultimate redemption. Would you want to share? I just had a question. The question was, you know, you had us mention how the Jewish people, the women, after the splitting of the Red Sea, they pulled out their tambourines and they started dancing. And they started leading a song for the entire Jewish nation. It was the biggest horror in history. <laughs> right? I love that. And the question is, where did they get the tambourines from? There were no music... It's um, a good question. What's it called? Guitar centers or any music stores in, in the desert. There was no music stores. So how did the, Jews, how did the Jewish people have tambourines? Where did they have tambourines from? So to answer that question, I'm going to divert a little bit with a little story. There was a king... His name was Hiskiyahu uh, Amelech. Um, Hiskiah, the king, he was the 13th king of the house of Judah. And he was um, 
Shalom Elizabeth, hello. Uh, he was in, um, he was a great king, he was a righteous king. Many kings had many values, many, many things that stuck out. But Chizkiyo HaMelech, King Heskia, he was known to be a righteous and pure and good king. And the Talmud relates that he was so he had the potential to be Mashiach, to be the Messiah. What does that mean? Throughout history, Jewish people always believed that certain leaders were 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 candidates for Mashiach, were candidates for to to, to lead the Jewish people out of exile. Moses is one, King David, you know, there's many ones that we that, that Jewish people believed. And King Chizkia, the Talmud says he was not eligible for Mashiach. The Gemara says why? The Talmud says, why is he not eligible for Mashiach? Because he didn't sing praise. He didn't sing praise. Mm. Had he sung praise to God, he would have been eligible for Mashiach. He didn't sing, he didn't sing praise, therefore he's not eligible. So the, uh, the, so the commentaries ask a question. So what do you mean he's not eligible? This clearly says in the Bible, after he, wa- he, he fought a war with Sancheirev, with one of the kings at the time, he clearly announced his entire, the entire nation at the time that we have to sing praise to God. We have to sing God. So why are you saying that he's not that he didn't sing praise and therefore he's not eligible to be the Messiah? So the the commentary, the same commentary that asks, also answers the question and says the reason why he was not eligible to be Mashiach is because he sang praise after he won the war. To be Mashiach, you have to constantly be in a space, in a headspace, in a belief to anticipate praise, to anticipate reasons to celebrate. You're saying that, even when you don't have everything good and there's not that redemption, that final redemption. Even if it doesn't look like that in today's reality. Mm. That's powerful. So let's take it back to the story where Yehudas was saying with the woman. The woman didn't, where did they get the tambourines from? There was no shops to buy it. They left Egypt and they knew, when they left Egypt, they knew that they were going to sing praise. And they had such belief in God that they're going to ser- that they're going to sing praise and therefore they brought the tambourines with them even though there was no there was no imminent there was no imminent reason for them to sing but they brought it with them and that is the equivalence of messianic energy that is messianic redemption energy so when when we're talking about number 1 it shows about the certain certain belief that the Jewish woman had at the time and that that continues still today and number two... And also, the women, they say in, in the merit of the women, that's why the Jewish people left Egypt, and that's why we will leave our Egypt, our exile. Yes, true. And, yeah, and, and the other... Two. And number two is that despite what situation we're in, you need to have a messianic pair of glasses. Mm. You need to have a, a, a optimistic, praiseworthy... Um, vision of the future that is going that we're going to be able to sing praise and that's what the jewish people did at the time the jewish women at the time to be more precise and that is the heels of the holiday we're standing on right now just in a few hours will be shavi shel pesach will be the incredible energy of messianic redemption energy in a few hours when this happened three thousand three hundred and thirty two years ago the jewish people were standing at the seashore they left egypt after all the miracles and they were stuck there was egyptians behind them and the sea in front of them and the miracle happened, this incredible miracle where God shattered the rules of nature to allow the Jewish people to pass, that energy is gonna be relived in a couple of hours. So if we wanna take inspiration from this holiday, this last two days of Passover, it's the inspiration of constantly being in a messianic and redemption attitude. Redemption, optimistic belief. Yeah. Which is not, by the way, so esoterical, and, and it sounds like so like spiritual. It's just the idea that there's better to come, that I'm going to take steps to, to make this world a better place, that God has a plan, and he's not going to leave us in a world of suffering and pain. He has a plan. He will take us out of this reality. We have many good things in this reality, but there's also lots of suffering, and that is not, our real, that is not the reality we should be okay with. We need to hope for better. We need to have dreams for, for, for a better world. Yep. That's a powerful message. <sighs> all right, friends. All right, guys. All the best. It's good to see all of you. Yeah. Wishing you guys a happy second days of Passover. A lot of strength, a lot of energy, a lot of happiness, a lot of redemption energy, a lot of optimism, a lot of praise. Count your blessings this holiday. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side of this. Yes. We're looking forward uh, 
to seeing y'all on Friday at noon and tap into this incredible energy of the seventh day of Passover, splitting of the sea. Split your sea. Split your sea. That's a good way to end. <laughs> Amen. All the best, guys. <laughs>